everyone. Welcome to Tesla Technology Private Limited. My name is Anishka Goyal and today we are going to discuss about the IoT development board. Its order code is 520-72D. In this IoT development board kit, we have covered almost all type of experiments which are related to the IoT. In this, we are using all type of sensors and for showing the result which we can measure by help of these sensors, we are using different type of displays, LCD, LED, OLED and 7 segment. Similarly, we are uh, have the experiments of DC motor interface, RTC, keypad matrix. So likewise, one by one, we upload all type of experiments code in our Arduino and then move to our kit for further processing. So let's start with our first experiment of interfacing of LCD display with our ESP module. This is the IoT development board. Here we have covered different type of components which can perform the experiment by using the IoT. So first we use this ESP32 module which has lot of feature as compared to Arduino. It has inbuilt Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth module by which you can set up the Bluetooth serial communication with the LCD display, 7 segment display and the OLED display. So the next one is the LCD display, 20 by 4 LCD display, liquid crystal display which is basically used for displaying the output and the masses. As you know that many type of electronic display are available in the market, but the best form or the basic form we used in the projects is the seven segment display. And the next best other option is the LCD display. So this is the seven segment display, which can control with this module, which I had explained. And this is the OLED display, which doesn't require any type of backlight. It mainly used in the dark environment and it consumes less energy as compared to this LCD display. The next one is the Max 232 serial port communication by which you can measure the varying voltage from 0 volt to 3.3 volt by using the serial port communication. For this serial port, you can connect the USB port to the PC. Then the next one is the real time clock, which mainly the time tracking device, which shows the correct time and data it shows the correct time and data by interfacing with this lcd display we interface this real time clock with the lcd display and on this lcd display we can show or display the real time and real data the next one is the dual dc motor interface here four leds and the two motor is given to you in which these two leds is for motor one and these two leds is for motor two which indicates that when the motor becomes on the green light will blow up and when the motor becomes off then red light will blow up so you can perform the experiment by using the single dc motor as well as the dual dc motor interface the next one is the keypad matrix where you can perform the different type of combination like 4x4, 3x4, 3x5 likewise and these are the key keys which is used for giving the user input. This is the most important input device in any electronic engineering because it is the cheapest and the easiest way to give commands and the instruction to any type of electronic system. And here we have different type of sensors we used in this kit so first this is the humidity sensor which measures the humidity this is the ultrasonic sensor which measures the unknown distance when you move the object near to this ultrasonic sensor then it measures the distance between its sensor and the object and it can show this distance in the lcd display Similarly, when you move the object away from this ultrasonic sensor, then according to measuring the distance between them, it can display the distance on the display. The next one is the smoke sensor, which measures the smoke. This is the temperature sensor. This is the PIR sensor, which mainly measures the position. This is the IR sensor, which transmits the infrared light. And according to the amount of light come back to it, it can measure or detect the object. And this is the LDR sensor, light dependent register, which measure the light intensity according to the changing in the resistance value. And this, these are the LED interface. And for this LED interface, for these controlling LEDs, we have these push switches interface. By using this push switches interface, you can uh, control the LEDs all of procedure. Now, next one is the buzzer, which can interface with this ESP module and 
controlling this procedure now next is power supplies here we have these plus 5 volt plus 5 volts all these power supply which is given to you and this is the ground section now next come on the sd card section which can interface with this esp module and which shows the learning that how we can read or write data in the sd card by using this esp module this is a port section by adjusting this you can change the value so overall these all the components and this is the breadboard by which you can perform any type of experiment by using the electronic components so these esp lcd seven segment all these components are used in this kit for performing the experiment so one by one i can perform or I'll, i also show the experiments so one by one i will show the all the experiment from this so one by one i will show the experiment individually with this components and see that how they work together all these components so this is the basic knowledge of the components which we used in this kit iot development board so this is the lcd display in which we can perform the experiment of 20 by 4 lcd interfacing with this esp32 so firstly we have to give supply to this esp32 so for that i am connecting this usb port with this module so here you can see that the red led will glow up which indicates that we have given the power supply to this module now we are going to connect all the connections of this lcd display so here you can see that there are four sections which will given to us ground vcc power supply sda data pin and scl clock pin so one by one we connect all these four pins so first scl pin is connected to the d22 pin of the esp32 so here now i am connect this sda pin which is data pin to the esp32 d21 pin and for given the power supply of this lcd display i am connect this vcc power pin to the vie pin of esp32 so you can see that the light will glow up of this lcd display which indicates that we have given the power supply to this lcd display and the ground i am connect this ground of lcd display to the ground of this module so we are done with the connections these all connections are also mentioned in the manual also which is given to you along with this kit so you can take the reference from where see SCL pin to the d22 pin sda pin to the d21 pin vcc pin to the v in of this esp32 and ground pin to the ground of the esp32 so we are done with the connections of this lct display interfacing with this esp2 esp32 now we will go to the pc and upload the code in this module so we are done with the connections of interfacing of lct display with the esp32 now we will see that how we can upload the code of this lct display with the esp32 so before uploading the code you have to install the esp32 dev kit driver which is inside the cd which is given to you along with this kit so after installing the driver properly firstly you will have to open your device manager in your pc and check that whether it is detecting your usb port or not which is connected to the esp32 so here i am open this device manager and here it is a port section so when i disconnect this usb port from esp32 then you can see that it is removed and when i am again connect this usb port then it will show to this name silicon labs usb to u at bridge com 8 so it is indicating that it can detect the usb port so after detecting it now we will upload the code in the arduino id so firstly i am open the folder where i can store the lcd address code and lcd message code so this is the order code of iot development board here you can see that the two codes will store lcd address and lcd message so first we upload the lcd address code now i will open it so this is the code which will shown to you so firstly we have to select the board so the board name is mentioned here 
is already shown to you dot it esp32 dev kit if the name of the board will not be shown to this will not be shown to here then you can select other board this option and you can type dev kit so you can select dot it esp32 dev kit and here you can select comet section then you can press ok so our board is selected now we can upload this code first before uploading it first we can verify it so it takes some time after that verify process will be done so the code is verified now we will upload this code after verifying it we will upload this code so after that uploading will be done you can see in here we are done with the uploading now the lcd address code will be uploaded this is the lcd address code which is uploaded now we will have to upload the main message code so now i am again go back to that folder and select the lcd message here lcd message code is shown to you so i will open it so this is the code which will shown to you of this lcd message info similarly you have to select the board so here you can see that com8 will be shown to you so you can select it and type dev kit select and com8 now press ok so the board is selected now you can verify it so now the code is verified compiling is done now you can upload the code now you can see in here the code will be uploaded successfully here it is 100% successfully code is uploaded so we have uploaded both lcd address code and the lcd message code now we will move to the kit again and see it's working whether the message is displayed or not on the lcd display now we have uploaded the code successfully the result you can show on the display welcome to tesca technology jaipur So we are done with the experiment of interfacing of this LCD display with the ESP32 module. So our next experiment is OLED display, which basically used for displaying the message or the output, which we want to show that. It similarly used as the LCD display, but it consumes less power as compared to LCD display. So for interfacing this OLED display with this ESP module, we have these four connections are given to us. But before connecting these connections, first we have to supply this ESP module. So here you can see that I have already given supply to this ESP. Now I am giving the power supply to this OLED display by connecting this VCC power supply to the 3v3 of the ESP module. And the ground pin of the ESP module with the ground pin of the, so both the ground pins are connected. Now I am connecting this SCL clock pin of this OLED display with the D22 pin of this ESP module. Now I am connecting this SDA pin, data pin, data pin to the D21 pin of the ESP module. So we have done all the connections of this OLED display of interfacing this 
LCD display with this ESP module. Now we will move on to our PC and uploading the code of OLED display and see that whether this will show the message or not. So we have done the interfacing of OLED display with the ESP module. Now we have to upload the code. So I will open the document section order code and here you can see the OLED display. So here it is the code we will open it. So this is the code of interfacing OLED display with ESP32 which will shown to you and here you can see that the board is already selected so now we can directly verify it. So the verifying process is being done. Now we have to upload the code. So the code will be getting upload after some time. So the uploading process will be done. Now we will move on to the kit again and check that whether the OLED display the message or not. Now the code is uploaded successfully. Now you will see that the message is displayed on the OLED. Now you can see here hello word it will be shown to you. Like that OLED display work and we can show any message or any output on the OLED display. So our next experiment is 7 segment display which is also an electronic display to show the output but it shows the numerical value it can show the 4 digit number. So for interfacing this 7 segment display with this ESP module we have these 4 connections ground, VCC power supply, SCI clock pin and SDFI connecting these 4 pins by using patch codes and from the ESP module we can interface the 7 segment display with this module. So one by one we connect all these pins but before connecting we have to give power supply. So here you can see that we have already given the power supply. So now I am giving the power supply to the 7 segment display uh, with the 3v3 of this ESP and ground pin of this 7 segment display the ground pin of ESP module and the SCL pin which is the clock pin connect with the D22 pin and the SDA pin data pin connect with the D21 pin of the ESP. So we have done all the connections and we interface 7 segment display with this module. Now we will move on to our PC and we uploaded the code of 7 segment display and see that how it works and how it shows the numbers. So we have done the interfacing of 7 segment display with the ESP module. Now we have to upload the code. So again I am open my folder. Here you can see the 7 segment display section. Here it is the code, we will open it. So this is the code which will shown to you. Now you have to select the board. So here you can see that the board is already selected on the board COM8. Now we can verify it. Now our code is verified perfectly. Now we will upload it. So the procedure of uploading all the codes in the Arduino of all experiments are same. So here you can see that our code is successfully uploaded. Now we will move on to the kit and see the working of 7 segment display. Now we have uploaded the code successfully. Now you can see that the numbers are displayed on the 7 segment display. It's uh, 1, 2, 3 like that. So here you can see that 1, 2, 1, 23. So uh, 301 different numbers are displayed on the 7 segment display. So that is how 7 segment display works and we can display the numbers on this 
display so this is the experiment of seven segment display now next we will move on our next experiment now the next experiment is the dual dc motor interface in which we are using the ic of l29 3d of motor driver ic and two dc motors four leds and the power supply so for interfacing this dual dc motor with this esp module we have these five connections first plus five volt power supply for giving the power supply to this dc motor and these four are the inputs input one input two input three and input four so by using patch codes one by one we connect all these inputs from the esp module so firstly we have to give in the power supply to this esp so i am connecting this port for given the power supply now after giving the power supply to this esp i am connecting this plus 5 volt of this dual dc motor with the plus 5 volt of power supply now i am connecting all these four inputs one by one input one with the d2 pin of the esp module input 2 with the d4 pin of the esp module similarly input 3 with d2 six pin and input 4 with the d27 pin of esp module now we have done all the connections of the dual dc motor now we will move on to our pc for uploading the code and see its working so we have done the connection of interfacing of dual dc interface with the esp module now we have to upload the code so firstly i am open my folder document section order code of iit development board here you can see that the dual dc interface folder open it so the code is written in the notepad so i will copy this code and paste in the arduino control c now i am open my arduino ide after opened it we will proceed with the new sketch and firstly we have to select the board so here you can see that the board is already selected dot it esp base kit now i am pasting the code which i copied so the code of dual dc interface will be shown to you now we will verify it so the verifying process is being done now we have to upload the code so here you can see that our code is uploaded successfully so we have uploaded the code of dual dc motor interface successfully now we will see that how it's work so here we are having these two dc motors which can be move in both the direction clockwise as well as anti clockwise but the direction of motion will depend upon the connection of the terminal of these two dc motors with the switches so here we are having these four leds for individual motor 1 and motor 2 for motor 1 these are two leds red and green and the name i mention s1 and s2 and similarly we have two another leds for motor 2 red and green s3 and s4 so when s1 led will glow to red it it indicates that motor 1 motion becomes a start while the motor 2 will have to be stopped and the motion of the motor 1 will have to be in clockwise direction and after some delay when this red led switch to green it indicates that the motion of the motor 1 now can be start from clockwise to anti clockwise direction similarly when these red led switch to green and green now switch to red it indicates that motor 2 motion can be start while the motor 1 will have to be stopped 
so similarly the motion of motor 2 is a start in the clockwise direction because the red led will glow and after some time when the when red led will switch to green it indicates that the motion of the motor 2 can now be changed from clockwise direction to anti clockwise direction so like that dual dc motor interface works one by one for some time motor 1 motion will start and after some delay motor 2 motion can be start so this is the basic procedure of the dual dc motor interface now i am uploading the code again and you will see the procedure you will see the working that when the red led will glow motor one motion will start in a clockwise direction and when it switch to green it will forward it to anti clockwise direction and similarly will happen for motor two So I am uploading the code again. Now you will see the working. Here red LED will glow after some delay. This switch will to anti-clockwise direction. Now this will stop. So now you can see there when this red LED will glow it will end clockwise direction and when the green LED will glow it will forward to anti-clockwise direction similarly for motor 2. So this is the basic working of the dual DC motor interface. Now we will move our next experiment. So we have uploaded the code of LED interface with this ESP module successfully. Now we will see the working. So here you can see that the red LED will glow up and it can be controlled by using this switch button. When I press it hold then you can see that the glowing of LED will stopped and when I am open it then this red, red LED will glow. So similarly, you can control all these LEDs by connecting the patch codes and by interfacing these LED with this ESP module, you can control all these LEDs with this switch buttons. So we have connected both LED and its push button with the ESP module. Now we will upload the code. So similarly, first we open the document section, go with this code and blinking of LED using push buttons. So open it. So here you can see that the code is written in the notepad. I will copy this code and paste in the Arduino. So I copied it. Now I am open my Arduino ID. After opened it, we will proceed with a new sketch. And delete this previous data. and I am pasting the code which I copied. So this is the code of blinking of LED or controlling of LED using the push buttons. And here you can see that the board is already selected. Dot it ESP32 dev kit. We can verify it. So the verifying process is being done. Now we can upload the code. So here you can see that the uploading process also being done. Now uploading the code successfully. We will move on to the kit again and check that whether the LED is blinking or not. So our next experiment is by measuring the humidity and the temperature in the environment by using this humidity sensor and the readings which we measure by this sensor display on this OLED display. So first we interface the humidity sensor OLED display and both are interfaced with this ESP. So I have already given the power supply to this ESP. Now I am giving the power supply to this humidity sensor with the 3v3 of ESP module. And now I am connect this data pin to the D14 pin of the ESP module and the ground section are interconnected. So the connections of humidity sensors are done. Now I am interface the OLED display. So first I am connecting the VCC power supply of this OLED display with the VIN power supply of this ESP module. Similarly I am connect the ground of both of them. Now I am connecting the SCL pin which is the clock pin of this OLED display to the 
D22 pin of this ESP module and SDA pin which is the data pin to the D21 pin of this ESP module. So we have done all the connections of interfacing both the modules with this ESP. Now we will move on to our PC and upload it the code and see it's working, how it measures the humidity and the temperature and can be displayed on this OLED. Now we have connected the humidity sensor with the OLED display and both are interfaced with the ESP module. Now we will upload the code. So firstly, I'm open my folder. And here you can see that humidity sensor folder open it so this is the code which will open in Arduino ID so this is the code of this humidity sensor which will shown to you first we will have to select the board so here you can see that the board is already selected that is ESP data now we can verify it So here you can see that the verifying process being done, all the libraries which we installed, all are verified. Now we have to upload this code. So here you can see that we have uploaded the code successfully. Now we will move again to the kit and see the working of the humidity sensor and how it will show the how it will show and detects the temperature and how we can display on the OLED. So we have uploaded the code of interfacing this humidity sensor with this OLED display and both are interfacing with this ESP module successfully. So now we are seeing the working. So this is our the humidity sensor which sends the humidity in the, our environment and the reading of this humidity sensor which measured can be shown on this OLED display. So you can see in here this humidity sensor sends the humidity in the environment and the readings which we measure by this sensor can be displayed on this OLED. Now you can see in here it measures the temperature and the humidity both. So when I am increasing the temperature or the humidity on the humidity sensor then it also changes the reading which can also be shown on this OLED display. So our next experiment is the ultrasonic sensor which basically emits approximately 40,000 Hz ultrasonic rays which will travel surrounding the air. When any object or the obstacle comes under this range, it will bounce back to this module. So it calculates the time taken by the rays travel from the object to this module and calculate the distance between the object and the sensor and that distance which will see on the our serial monitor after uploading the code. So firstly we do all the connections for interfacing this sensor to this ESP module. So here we have these three connections are given to us plus three volt for giving the power supply to this sensor, prego section, ego section and the ground is internally connected. So one by one we connect all these three pins to this ESP module. So firstly we have to give power supply to this ESP module. So I have already given the power supply. Now I am giving the power supply to this ultrasonic sensor by connecting this plus 3 volt of the sensor to the 3v3 of the ESP module. Now I am connecting this trio pin of the sensor to the D5 pin of ESP module. Now eco pin connect with the D18 pin of this module. So we have done the connections of ultrasonic sensor. Now we will move on to our PC for uploading the code and see it's working. So we have done the connections of ultrasonic sensor. Now we will upload the code of ultrasonic sensor. So again I am open my folder. It's order code. Here you can see that this ultrasonic sensor code. We will open it. So now you can see the code of this ultrasonic sensor. So select the board, commit, type this, it, select it and press OK. Now the board is selected. Firstly, verify it. So here the code is verified. Now 
we upload it now you can see here the code is uploaded successfully now we will move on to our kit and see that how the ultrasonic sensor works and how it can calculate the distance between the sensor and the object and this distance can be shown to us on this serial monitor now we have uploaded the code successfully now we will see that how ultrasonic sensor works and how it calculate the distance so for calculating the distance we have to place the object in the front of this ultrasonic sensor so where suppose this is an object and when i am placing this object in front of this ultrasonic sensor then it calculate the distance between the sensor and the object and it can be shown on the serial monitor so we will see that on the serial monitor also and when i am moving this object come closer to the sensor then it shows the lesser distance as compared to when i am moving this object away from this sensor then it shows the higher distance because the time taken by the travel coming back to the object to the sensor is higher than the previous so now we will see that on our serial monitor how it calculate the distance between the object and the sensor as i had explained before when we move the object closer to the sensor then it shows the lesser distance as compared to when we move the object away from this ultrasonic sensor then it shows the higher distance because the time taken by the rays coming back from the object to the sensor is higher when the object is away from the module so the distance calculating by the this sensor can be shown to us on the serial monitor so this is a serial monitor here you can see that in centimeter it can be shown the distance between the object and the sensor so when i am moving my hand closer to the ultrasonic sensor then you can see that the distance between lesser and when i am moving my hand slightly away from the sensor then it increasing the distance here you can see that it also shows the inch and the distance between the object and the sensor so like this this ultrasonic sensor works when any object is moving closer to the sensor then it shows the lesser distance and when it is moving away from the sensor then it shows the higher distance so by using this ultrasonic sensor we can calculate the distance between the object and the sensor now the next experiment will be the temperature sensor which sends the temperature in the environment so for interfacing this temperature sensor with this esp module we have these three connections are given to us plus three volt which is the power supply for this temperature sensor then second is the data pin and the third is ground which is internally connected and we have already given the power supply to the esp module so firstly i am connect this plus three volt of this temperature sensor to the 3v3 of this esp module to given the power supply to this sensor now i am connect this data pin this sensor to the d32 pin of this module now i am also connect this l0 led with the d2 of the esp module so we have done with the connections of this temperature sensor now we will move on to our pc and upload the code and see the working of this temperature sensor and later we will connect also the bluetooth of our mobile phone with this esp module because the measurement of the temperature which sensed this temperature sensor will be shown to you and can be shown to you on your mobile phone by connecting the bluetooth with this esp module we have done the connection of interfacing of temperature sensor with the esp module now we have to upload the code in the arduino so as we did all the previous experiments first we have to open the folder in which the code are stored so here you can see that temperature sensor so i will open it so the code of temperature sensor will be shown to you first we have to select the board so here you can see that the board is already selected dotted esp32 now i can verify it
so here you can see red the verifying process being done after some time so our code is verified successfully now we have to upload this code so here you can see that our code is uploaded successfully now after uploading the code you can see the result on the serial monitor here the line which will shown to you the device is started now you can pair it with bluetooth it indicating that now we can pair it our bluetooth of mobile phone and we take the reading of temperature which measured by temperature sensor now the code is uploaded successfully now we will see that the measurement of the temperature is sensed by the temperature sensor can be shown on our mobile phone but for this we have to firstly connect the mobile phone's bluetooth with this device so the line which will shown to you after uploading the code perfectly here you can read this on serial monitor the device is started now you can pair it with bluetooth this indicates that we have uploaded the code perfectly and now we will move on to our mobile phone and we'll see that how we can connect the mobile bluetooth with this sensor so we have raised on our mobile phone screen firstly you have to install the app serial bluetooth terminal you can install it from play store so this is the app serial bluetooth terminal after installing it from play store firstly you have to connect the bluetooth so firstly we have to go with bluetooth section here you can see that the name will be shown to you esp32 open it so now you can pair with this esp32 now open it you can read this paired bluetooth device so we have paired our bluetooth with the esp32 now we will move on to our app which is serial bluetooth terminal so here firstly you have to go with this devices section and it will name show you esp32 now to click it so here you can see that connecting to esp32 and it will connect it and it will measure the temperature by help this temperature sensor it measures 71.26 f 71.26 f so like this uh, this temperature sensor is used in measuring the temperature if i am increasing the temperature then it will show the increased temperature also so here you can see that when i increase the temperature then the temperature sensor sends the temperature and value will be shown to this on your mobile phone first it measure the 71.26 now it will measure the 80.26 so like this temperature will be increased and it will shown on to your mobile phone so by the help of this temperature sensor you can measure the temperature in the environment so our next experiment is the pir sensor pir sensor basically works as a motion detector it detects the motion of any objects so here we have given three connections plus 3 volt power supply data and ground so firstly we have to give supply to this pir sensor by connecting the plus 3 volt to the esp 3v3 so i am giving the power supply to this pir sensor from esp32 so i connect this plus 3 volt to the 3v3 power supply of this esp32 and the data pin connected with the d19 pin of this esp32 and the ground section is the internally connected so we are done with the connections of pir sensor now we will move to our pc for uploading the code in the esp32 so we are done with the connections of pir sensor with the esp32 now we will upload the code of pir sensor so again i am open the folder where i have stored the code so this is the other code here this is the pir sensor code i will open it so this is the code which 
example shown to you similarly here also you have select firstly you have to select the board so it is already selected dot it esp32 baked it now you can directly upload the code so it takes some time after some time uploading will be done so here you can see that uploading will be done we uploaded the code successfully now we will see the result on this pir sensor pir sensor basically works on the motion detection so we will uploaded the code successfully now we will see that how we can take the reading from the pir sensor so the result of the pir sensor will be shown to us on the serial monitor so here you can see that this is a serial monitor where we can show the result so when any motion detects in the front of pir sensor or comes under the range of pir sensor then it shown to us motion detected and when the motion becomes stopped then it shown motion stopped so i'm giving the example suppose uh, i am moving my hand from the pir sensor then it shown motion detected you can see that and when the motion becomes a stop then it shown motion stopped so like that pir sensor works it detects the motion of any object so this is the working of the pir sensor when we interface with this esp module so we can take the reading of pir sensor from the esp32 now we will move on to our next experiment which is ir sensor which is basically similar to as pir sensor but the basic difference between them this pir sensor detects the changes in infrared radiation emitted by an object and this ir sensor detects the presence of infrared lights but both of them are used for object detection in different applications so here in ir sensor these two connections are given to us first plus 3 volt for given the power supply to this sensor and the second for the data pin so by connecting these two pins with this module we can interface this ir sensor with this esp module and we have to given power supply to this esp module also so for this i am connecting this usb port for given the power supply now you can see here a red led will glow up which indicates that we have given the power supply and i am connecting this plus 3 volt of this ir sensor with the 3v3 of esp module for given the power supply to this sensor here you can also see that this red led will glow up which will indicate that we have given the power supply to this ir sensor also now i am connecting this data pin to the d5 of pin of esp module so we have done the connections of this ir sensor now we will move to on our pc for uploading the code for the further working so we have connected both vcc pin and the data pin with the esp32 module now we have to upload the code similarly as we did in the previous experiments so i am again open my folder where i stored all the codes document section 52072d here you can see that the ir sensor folder we will open it so the code of ir sensor is shown to you as usual first we have to select the board so here com8 then type bake kit and select com8 section press okay now board is selected now you have to verify it so the code is verified now we have to upload this so here you can see that our code is uploaded successfully and the result of this ir sensor can be shown on this serial monitor similarly as pir sensor now we have uploaded the code successfully now we will see that the working of this ir sensor how it works and how it detects the object for detecting the object we ensure that we must place the object 
which comes under the range of this IR sensor. For that, we have to place the object in front of this black LED because the infrared radiations are coming out from there and detects the object when it interrupts the infrared rays and reflect them back with the result display on the serial monitor. So we will again go on our PC and show on our serial monitor whether it directs the object or not. So I am placing the object in front of this and we can see the result on the serial monitor whether it directing the object or not. If it is detected then it is shown to us motion detected. As I explained before when we place the object in front of the IR sensor or comes under the range of IR sensor then it detects the object and it shows the object detected and when there is no object in front of IR sensor then it shows the no object or the no obstacle so we can see the result on the serial monitor so this is the serial monitor here you can see that when there is no object in the front of this IR sensor then it shows the no obstacle and when I am placing the object in front of the IR sensor then it shows the object detected so like this this IR sensor work by using this IR sensor we can detect the object so the next is LDR light dependent register which is basically used for checking the intensity of the light according to the changing value of the resistance when there is no light on the LDR, there is a darkness on the LDR, then the, its resistance value becomes increased as well as the voltage across the LDR become also increased. And when the light is falling on this LDR, the resistance value become goes decrease as well as the voltage across the LDR goes decrease. So according to the changing value of the resistance, we can check the intensity of the light. So here we have these two connections plus 3 volt for given the power supply of this LDR and the second one is the input and here we are using also a one LED which is connected to this ESP module. So we have already given the power supply to this ESP module. Now we have connected these three connections with this module. So I am giving this plus 3 volt to this LDR by the V in of ESP module and connecting the input of the LDR to the VP of the ESP. Now I am connecting this L0 LED, I am using this L0 LED to the D13 pin of the ESP. Now we have done the connections of LDR and we will go onto our PC and uploading the code and we will now Now we are done with the interfacing of LDR with the ESP module. Now we will move on to the Arduino for uploading the code. So again open the document 520 72D section order code. Here you can see that the LDR sensor section open it. Now you will see that the code of LDR sensor is there. So Firstly, we have to select the board. Similarly, so COM8, type dev kit, press OK. So the code is selected. Now, first we have to verify it. So the code is under verifying process. Now the code is verified. Now we upload it. So the code is successfully uploaded. Now we will move on to the kit and see that the working of the LDR and how it's work and how it shows the changes of value of resistance by which we can identify the intensity of the light. So we have uploaded the code of LDR successfully. Now we will see the working of the LDR. So when there is a light on LDR, then the LED will not glow up, which will indicate that when there is a L light on LDR, the resistance value become goes on decreasing as well as the voltage become 
across this LDR goes on decreasing but when I am holding my thumb on this LDR for decreasing the intensity of light then you can see that a red LED will glow up which indicates that when there is no light on LDR the resistance value becomes goes increasing and the voltage across increasing. So this is the experiment of LDR which will shown to that by changing the resistance value by differentiate the resistance value we can identify the intensity of light. And we can also see the changing in value, resistance value on to our serial monitor. So we will move again to on our PC and showing the changing in resistance value in our serial monitor. So after uploading the code, we will see that the result of the changing in resistance value on the serial monitor. So this is the serial monitor. Here you can see that the analog value which will shown to you, this is the resistance value. Here you can see that there is a light on the LDR because of that the resistance value become goes on decreasing. So here you can see that the resistance value become decreasing on decreasing and show that the very bright which indicates that there is a light on LDR. And when I am holding my thumb on the LDR for decreasing the intensity of light so you will see that the resistance value will become change. So you can see here the resistance value changes and it become increasing because the light intensity on the LDR become decrease and it also show that the dim means there is no light there is a darkness on the LDR. So like that the LDR sensor works and I had explained on the kit also when there is no light a red LED will glow up which indicates that there is a no light on LDR. So by seeing the changing in resistance value you can identify the intensity of the light. So this is the LDR experiment. Now we will move on our next experiment which is the keyboard matrix. As I said before, keyboard matrix is the most important input device for giving the commands to the users. So here we are having all these buttons by pressing these buttons we can give the commands to the user by the different combination like 4x4, 4x3, 3x5 likewise. So there are 8 inputs are given to us so one by one by using the patch codes we can connect or interface with the ESP module. So first we connect this R1 input to D2 pin of the ESP. R2 with D4 of the ESP. R2 with the D4 of the ESP. Similarly, R3 with D5. R4 with D18. And so we have done these four above combinations. Now we connect these lower one. So C1 connect with this. C1 connect with the D19 pin. D19 pin. And C2 connect with the D15. D15. Now remaining C3 and C4 connect with the D22 and D23. So it will be D22 and it connect with the D23. So we have connected all these inputs 4 above and 4 lower inputs with this ESP module and these all our connections are also mentioned in our manual so you can take the reference so here you can see that with this diagram you can connect with easily all the inputs with the ESP module so you can take the reference of the manual also and do the experiments so we have connected all these connections we have done the connections we have interface keyboard matrix with this ESP now we will move on to our PC and uploading the code and see it's working how we can 
give commands to the user by, by pressing this keyboard matrix. So we have done the interfacing of keypad matrix with the USB module. Now we will upload the code. So for uploading, first we open the document section, go with this code and here you can see that the keypad matrix, open it. So this is the code. First I will copy it. Now I am in pasting in the Arduino ID. So I am open my Arduino ID. So here our Arduino is opened. Now we will proceed with this new sketch. First I am deleting the previous data and select the board. So you can see here the board is already selected dotted USB base kit. Now I am pasting the code which I copied. So this is the code of keypad matrix. Now first we have to verify it. So the verifying process has been done after some time. So now the code our is verified. Now we have to upload it. So you can see here our code is uploaded successfully. Now you will see the result of keypad matrix on the silver monitor. How we press the keys on keypad matrix and show the result on the serial monitor. So now I am open my serial monitor where I can show the result. So when I press key first then you can see here it will show to you key pressed equals to 1 and similarly when I press 2 then it will be shown to you similarly 3 A B C so like this you can give the commands to the user by using this keypad matrix so this is the experiment of keypad matrix which we used as an analog input so that's all the demonstration from my side. We can do different type of experiments with this IoT development board in which some of them I had explained to you and other remaining experiments you can do with the help of our manual which is given to you along with this kit in which we explained all the connection procedure, working procedure, installing of drivers and as well as the uploading the code in the Arduino. So you can take the reference of our manual for doing the experiment easily. And if you have any query related to this kit or any other procedure, you can contact at Tesca Global website also. You can find the link in the description box. And if you like this video, like it, like, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you.